Good afternoon, this is Weather United with another tropical update for October 8th, 2022. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making decisions. Please consult the National Hurricane Center for the latest information for where you're at. Also, if you are new to the YouTube channel and you like the detailed weather content, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So when we take a look at Julia this afternoon on the infrared satellite imagery, we can clearly see that the system is still slightly misaligned as far as the vortex goes, and how we can tell is by looking at the structure of Julia. Based on the infrared, we have a lot more blobbiness continuing across the system. Even so, we have very deep convection. It is not really in banding futures really much to the north. Instead, we do have increasing banding futures to the southwest of the system, which indicates to me we still have about shear from the north at about 15 to almost 20 knots. We can confirm this by looking at the uh, visible satellite imagery on the GO-16 channel, and we can uh, clearly tell that the low-level center might be somewhere in here, still slightly misaligned just by a hair, and it's not um, allowing this system to explosively intensify. Now, it is worth noting we do have a new burst of deep convection that we just looked at on the infrared that is trying to wrap around and we will see if this actually leads to a forbo uh, forbotion of rapid intensification at a much faster rate than what we were seeing yesterday. But nevertheless, as it stands now, this system is becoming slightly more better organized, but still lacks any banding, very um, substantial banding um, in very intense bands on the northern side, other than the one well to the north that is producing tropical storm force winds. We can still confirm this by looking at the GMI microwave imagery, taking note that the mid-level circulation is in here in the deep red colors, and the low-level center is slightly just to the north of the system, which means that we have a little bit, just a hair, of northerly shear that is still imparting that and keeping this well lopsided on the uh, southern side of the system. And we can confirm this by, again, looking at our um, infrared satellite imagery, how a lot of the outflow here is more mostly on the southern side of the circulation, which indicates, again, that shear is really keeping this under control or keeping it from really intensifying at a quick rate. So now, taking a look here at the National Hurricane Center, as it stands right now as of the 2 o'clock advisory, winds are at 65 miles an hour. It is slowing down a little bit, moving to the west at 18 miles an hour, and there are still hurricane warnings issued for Nicaragua, as most of the models still indicate that this is going to become a Category 1 hurricane by the time it makes landfall very early in the morning hours of Sunday, more than likely by about 5 or 6 that's when the landfall is projected in Nicaragua. So Julia is forecasted to strengthen into a hurricane later today and a hurricane warning is in effect for portions of the Nicaragua coast and the islands of the Providencia and San Andreas. Um, hurricane force winds and a dangerous storm surge are expected in areas where the core of the system crosses the islands later today and moves onshore in Nicaragua early Sunday morning. Life-threatening flash flooding, mudslides are expected across portions of the Central America this weekend. Flash flooding is possible across the uh, Tehuantepec in Mexico early next week. For more information, please go to the nationalhurricanecenter.gov or just simply type in hurricanes.gov for the latest information in regards to your current uh, impacts and key messages from Julia from the National Hurricane Center. So now we're going to transition and we're going to take a look at our global computer models because we really need to take a look at this. This is very important because we want to know where this is going to head after it makes landfall in Nicaragua. So our primary steering features is this deep layer ridge to the north. This has been well modeled in the previous forecasts ran by the GFS model. Take note of the topographical geopotential height lines um, and at the 500 millibar level. We got our vorticity here in the rainbow colors. So that's what we're seeing is our little vortex, our little uh, area of spin. And then we have 
are 200 millibar winds our upper level most upper tropospheric winds in these wind barbs that are going like this we got some barbs going in like this which indicates to us that there is um, some upper level steering influences helping to push um, Julia off towards the east or off towards the west I should say sorry so Nicaragua was there so going forward here we can see our system is going to be crossing over into the Tawanapak uh, area see I get a little uh, miss uh, confused here uh, by a bit um, and you can see the system is going to get ripped apart as it crosses that landmass into even portions there of the southernmost area of say um, Honduras uh, you can see a little bit of the vortex but this ridge is in place but it's a matter of where is it going to go after this well the GFS model does not have anything at all in the Gulf of Mexico and a lot of the energy still remains to the south there of say the Yucatan Peninsula because this ridge is sampled by the model to be pretty strong at least strong enough to keep this from moving northward into the Gulf of Mexico and we can see that that continues all the way into the next six to eight days as the GFS model indicates. We only have one uh, or we only have time for one model because I am going to make a U.S. weather forecast this afternoon in regards to the extreme cold air that is expected across the eastern half of the U.S. in weeks to come. More on that in my next video though. So Tropical Storm Julia is expected to become a category one. Some of the models are right up in the upper end of that in the low grade hurricane strength upper end tropical storm. My intensity forecast is right up there, right on the border of a category one hurricane. But for or fortunately, at least I am being pretty generous here and I'm only indicating that this is going to become a 70 to maybe 75 mile an hour tropical storm in the next several day or in the next uh, 24 hours or so and then it weakens to a tropical depression thereafter as what the NHC clearly said. All right, the track guidance forecast is pretty much straightforward and not much changes at all as Julia continues to move directly towards the west as what most of the models do indicate. The spaghetti plot does indicate that this is very, uh, very tightly clustered. It won't matter exactly where the center passes, but what will matter on is that the impacts do extend pretty far out from the center. So just because you don't get the center does not mean you'll get the worst impacts. And then of course, very divergence um, as especially Especially in day three and four because it all is uh, dependent on where that ridge is but most of the models have been pretty consistent at showing that ridge that is going to be quite strong there in the Gulf of Mexico which means this is going to be passing well to the south of the Yucatan Peninsula and the Bay of Campeche which means that impacts in the Gulf of Mexico are neglected at this time which means we're not going to see a lot of impacts at all given with what our forecast is looking like today. So now that we had a full detailed discussion on Tropical Storm Julia, that is now a big threat to Nicaragua with heavy rainfall, strong winds, and possibly storm surge, you all need to uh, heed my advice and listen to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information for where you're at in regards to Hurricane Julia or Tropical Storm Julia as it is becoming better organized right now. And it's only a matter of time if that deep convection looks like it's trying to wrap around right now at the very end of this video. It's going to be very important if this actually develops a strong inner core or not, and if the vortex is in fact pretty well stacked. I'm probably thinking right now it could be, but it's very hard to tell right now because of this very deep mass of convection. This is going in this general direction, but it won't matter right now. This is a very powerful tropical storm that will do um, pretty significant impacts to Nicaragua with heavy rainfall, strong winds. So make sure, again, you do heed my advice and not listen to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information. All right. Please be safe. I pray to the Lord that you guys will be safe. All right. Thanks for watching.